Hey, what's happening everybody? I cleaned up a little bit and not because people told me I look silly with the mustache, but because I wanted to. Um, so today I'm going to be working on the van. We're back in Portland. We're finishing up getting done with the van. We just went on that big, uh, a big little trip uh, just to see how the van was doing, see if our, uh, our layout was going to work and test everything out, make sure everything was working to this point. And just to get out, man, because we've been here for so long. I've been stuck for so long. And uh, I've learned a lot along the way. I'm going to tell you about that. But today we're going to insulate the ceiling. Uh, it is bare metal. We only had one night where we had a problem with condensation. And that was because it was extremely humid. We were right next to the beach. And it was extremely humid and very cold too. So we had a little condensation that night. But every other night we were totally fine because we had both the roof vents open and they were blowing air. Um, but also it's very sunny out right now. And when it gets sunny, this roof gets super hot. I mean, the heat just pours off of this thing. So I think that a little bit of insulation is going to be a good thing until we get our uh, our high tops. We're going to do that. Uh, but I also wanted to talk about, uh, I get a ton of questions about what do you do for mail? How do you register your vehicle? How do you do your uh, you know registration and everything? Uh, so in the past, I just used my parents' address. Well, I used their old address, not the one they live at now. And um, I used that for registration. And then their mail, I would have forwarded to their new address. And then they would just tell me when I have mail. And every once in a while, they would mail me an envelope full of my mail. But that was a hassle for them. So I am not doing that anymore. Uh, there's a few mail forwarding services out of South Dakota that um, I checked them all out. And I found the one with the best prices. And I'm, I'm working through them now to get my mail forwarding and my vehicle registration. Um, you can also get citizenship in South Dakota through them very easily. You just have to stay in South Dakota one night and uh, show up and give the paperwork and bam, you've got a driver's license and you're now a citizen in South Dakota. Uh, I may do that later on. Right now, I didn't think it was a, why do it? My Oregon driver's license is still totally valid. But I did get the new van registered through South Dakota. I was going to get the old one registered through there because they don't do emissions checks. And my van, my Astro, even though it's got a brand new engine and everything in it, it still pops that code for random misfire. So it won't pass DEQ in Oregon. I cannot register it. Uh, but I'm going to sell it, so I figured why spend the extra, you know, two, three hundred bucks to get it registered in South Dakota when I'm just going to sell it and they're probably going to transfer the plates to a different state anyway. So uh, there is that. Um, the, the process of getting the new van registered through South Dakota was extremely easy. There's, there's a few pieces of paperwork you got to fill out. Uh, you got to have, I think, one notarized. And then you just send in the, the slips to the mail forwarding service, which is yourbestaddress.com, by the way. And they take care of everything for you. A week later, I had my plates. Boom, slapped them on. Good to go. I'm registered through South Dakota now. And the plates are actually pretty awesome looking. I like them a lot more than Oregon. Um, the only plates I like better in New York. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was super easy. And uh, the, the whole process was got a hold of them, talked on the phone. They walked me through the filling out the paperwork. Uh, part and I wrote that down and then I printed out the forms and did it and then I had a couple questions along the way because some of the terminology on the uh, the D the the Department of Motor Vehicles paperwork was like legal stuff that I didn't really understand so I emailed them they answered me right away I was able to fill that out get it notarized pop it in the mail boom got my plates um, the process for the for the mail forwarding is very similar it's super easy if you have any questions I just emailed them they emailed me right back not a problem they went through the process on the phone with me about how to fill the whole thing out. It's super easy um, and cheap. They, this, this one, yourbestaddress.com, definitely had the best prices of any of the ones I checked out. And it's nice because it's a small company. I think there's only a few people that work there. And they get back to you really quick and they talk to you like a person. It's not like the post office or something where they talk to you like you're just a number. So I highly recommend it. They have, uh, they have a couple different setups where one you just get your mail sent to you an envelope you send them a certain amount of money to have uh to have your mail sent to you and you can set it up at any you know specific times they can send you your mail wherever you want them to or you can just have them do it when you call them say hey i'm going to be in this town can you send my mail to this post office as a general i think it's called general delivery and then you just go to that post office and your mail you know as long as you give them enough time will all be there in an envelope and they have a new setup where every time you get a new piece of mail, they will e email you or text you a picture 
of the outside of the envelope and you can say yes I want that piece of mail can you send it to this address or you can just let them pile up and once a month have all your mail sent to you know wherever you're gonna be and they'll just send it to a post office general delivery if you have a friend's house or something you want it sent to you can you can do that as well so it's a really good deal uh, definitely would benefit a lot of travelers it's it's less than 20 bucks a month I think I ah, the price is offhand I don't remember but it was definitely cheaper than any of the other ones and they offer the same stuff um, so that's that's what I did, uh, yourbestaddress.com. I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to get started on the, uh, the insulation stuff. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, so up between these ribs is where I'm going to put the uh, insulation. I got this 3 quarter inch XPS, and I already cut it to fit in between this one. I just measured, you know, in between here and here, and then back there. And I, I added a little bit of length to tuck it back in. Now these things stick out, so I'm gonna have to do some fine cutting and fine tuning once I actually put these in. Plus, I have the uh, the roof vent in a couple spots, so this might be a little tricky. Um, it's kind of gonna be like cutting until it works. Now for these long bolts that were sticking out from the uh, roof vent, I actually use bolt cutters to trim them down quite a bit. And I think they'll be tucked in enough now where when I put the three quarter inch foam over them, they won't, uh, they won't cut our heads open or anything. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely trying to avoid that that's another reason for the insulation actually so um, I've also got this is the the shroud that comes with the fans it goes on the inside like this you, you got to cut it down because these things are ridiculously tall for like RVs that have a ton of insulation and stuff uh, but I'm gonna use this as a template once I get the thing in place so let me just push this thing in place real quick and show you how to do this by the way my uh, I've been planning to make this video about max air fans versus fantastic fantastic fans and that's coming very soon this needs to come out. Okay, so to get nice straight cuts on this stuff, it's pretty easy. I got my, uh, what do you call this? Square. Square. I've got my square. Thank you. Um, I just lay it down, get my measurements. So for the long way, it's from this knuckle to the end. So I'll lay this down. Very unscientific, but with the help of my square here, I'll get a nice straight cut. So then I just hold this down and I do away from my body. I never hold it and then come towards my body because if this thing slips, here goes my thumb. All right guys, so here it is. Not pretty, not pretty at all, but it'll do the job. Um, it's temporary. This thing isn't staying up here. This is just to slow down the temperature transfer a little bit and cool it off. All right, so Evie's over here working on the windows. It's crazy to me that I discovered skateboarding at 30 because uh, I always thought it was kind of crazy. You know, there's no brakes and it's so much hard. I was into BMX bikes when I grew up. I lived on a gravel road, so skateboarding wasn't really an option for me. I guess it could have been, but it really wasn't. Um, yeah, man, it's totally like replaced motorcycling to me, especially the electric longboard. Cause we have longboards and we have um, boosted boards now, electric ones. So that's pretty cool. But like the the thrill of being in the moment and going fast and and carving and turning is like the same thrill that I got from motorcycles. But it's it's less dangerous and it's uh, much more accessible. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper, definitely. Um, but it's like it's reminded me to like be in the moment and live loosely when you've got the adrenaline going and when you're going fast and you know whether it's on motorcycles or a boosted board or going downhill really fast on a long board you have to be loose and you have to allow the machine to do what it wants because if you don't and you get up tight it's going to start getting squirrely and you're going to crash so you got to live loose man on the board and that's reminded me to live loose in my life you know, the, the beginning of this channel was me like coming out of my shell and coming out of depression and coming into living life on my terms and doing what I want to do with my life and kind of finding myself, you know, and questioning all my beliefs and uh, like re recreating myself kind of. And I, I got into this as I was on the road longer and I was broke all the time and using credit cards to pay for food and everything. So I got a little more into like survival and what do I need to do to make money and all the stress that comes with that and the stress of being an entrepreneur, you know, and trying to make this YouTube thing work for me because I had this goal of, you know, I want to 
live an incredible life and share it and by sharing it make enough money to keep living the incredible life that was my goal and that was my purpose with youtube and it still is and it's been a long hard road but this this whole skateboarding thing has really reminded me to live loose and relax and allow things to come to me and allow things to unfold as they are and not to rush anything and to just allow it to be what it is and just live loose man you know what i mean so we're gonna get done on this uh this uh Insulation stuff and get started on the lights because we need lights in there using lamps and cell phones for flashlights kind of sucks um, I'm gonna run the wires for the lights. So I got all my lights on Amazon We got a bunch of different types for different uh, You know different needs if we need a bright light to look for something or we want it to feel like daylight in here We want to read or something we could do that if We want the super warm soft like candlelight for a nice romantic evening at the beach or something We could do that whatever we want. So we got several different types We got these guys which are nice and bright, but they're and they're pretty cool. So they're like sunlightish I forget the exact color temperature uh, you can either run both sides or just one for a dimmer or brighter light and then we got these little guys they have uh, built-in little diffusers here so the lights gonna be very soft it's not gonna be bright and harsh you know it's gonna be soft and mellow and not super bright uh, we're gonna put two of these on each side in the bathroom or I'm sorry the bedroom uh, area so that'll be nice and soft you know if we're looking for something at night or um, you know, we want to read something or whatever, just want a little bit of light in there. These will be great for that. And then we got the, uh, had to get more fairy lights. This is, I think, a 60-foot roll or something like that. Maybe it's a 30-foot. I don't remember. Eh, it looks like it's probably a 30. I don't know. Um, these I have had in the Astro for a while, and I absolutely love them because it's such warm, soft light. It's like candlelight. And I just love the feeling that these have. And when you buy these, some of them are like 16 volts. Some of them are like different voltages but these particular ones are 12 volt and they come with a plug to go into a wall and all you do is cut this this part off that you plug into the wall and then you just wire that straight into your fuse panel and plug it in and bam it goes right into this IR box and this um, receives information from the remote control and if it was receiving 110 or 120 volt it would step it down to uh, 12 volt but since you're plugging it straight in 12 volt no problem it's definitely better to wire these things directly in and run them as 12 volt rather than running them off an inver inverter because it's way more efficient. Uh, we also got, just in case we want some funky colors or uh, some weird flashy whatever, um, these LED strip lights. I don't know how well you can see those. I used to have these in the Astro and I took them out and replaced them with the uh, fairy lights. I kind of wish I had both. It's nice to have different options for lighting, especially we're gonna be doing a lot of videos in here and stuff, and lighting's really important for that. So we wanna have a lot of options, and this will definitely give us those. So links in the descriptions for all of these things. Once I get done here, you'll be able to see what they actually look like, so I'm gonna get on that. Okay, so the LED lights come with this block to power them through a uh, 120 or 110, whatever you wanna call it, uh, wall outlet in the US anyway. So what I did is I just cut the cable off. I just cut it and then I stripped it and then I put some connectors on it and plugged it straight into my fuse panel and check this out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. There we go. Check that out. Boom, they work. So as long as these things are 12 volt, uh, you can just cut the wire off the 120 part, put it in your fuse panel, and you're good to go. Not all of them are 12 volt though, so you gotta read the description when you're looking at these types of lights. Um, I already picked these ones out, so if you wanna check these ones out, like I said, link in the description. Fairy lights work exactly the same way. The rest of them, I'll just run a wire from my fuse panel, put the appropriate size fuse in there, and boom, they're good to go. All right, so now I know the LED lights and work, and I did the same thing with the fairy lights. They work great too. Um, I gotta wire up these little guys. So what I'm doing is I'm spacing them out right here. I got one right here, and I got the other one back over here. This is about where I'm gonna want them. You know, I'm about six inches from the edge of the bed, um, kind of just right over our head or our feet, um, in case we're reading or whatever, we want light back here. So I wanna connect these two in series and then run a wire to the fuse panel. So what I'm gonna do is get my positive and negative wires here and determine how long of a length I need. And right about there looks good. So of course I left my good wire cutters over there. I'm gonna cut that and then I'm gonna do that again because I've got the same lights on the other side. I'm gonna need the same length of wire. So boom, I'll set those off to the side. And then these are my, uh, I think they're called like automatic wire strippers or something. These are super nice to have because they're stripped wires. This is all you have to do. 
boom. Do the same thing on these ones. And then, and these are actually, uh, these are 16 gauge wires. These come with what look like probably 20, maybe 18, maybe 22, something like that. I'm not real familiar with smaller wire sizes. They'll be okay though. Um, so for these, I got these little crimp guys. I'm just gonna connect the red to the red. I like to give them a good twist so that they go in nice and clean and don't get all bunched up. Good, now just check it. That's good. It's in there nice and good. So now I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll just keep crimping these together, the positive and the negative, and then I'll do the same thing on this side, except on this side, I'm also, actually I'll just switch these so I can show you. I'll put in the wire from this light and a lead that goes to my fuse panel so that these are wired in series together. And then in the middle of that, I'll cut them and put on the right connectors to put a switch in in between. All right, everyone, so we got the insulation all in. It's just a temporary thing. It doesn't look very great, but I think it'll make a pretty big difference. Uh, but the sun is down now. I waited so I could show you guys what the lights look like before I go. So these are the uh, these ones. So this is cool, you can turn it off. You turn it to this side, you get one light. You push that down all the way, you get two. Pretty sweet. It's a nice like warm color. You can see the, the color on my face right now. It's a warm light, like it's uh, it's more like candle light than fluorescent, you know? So it, it's nice, that creates a good atmosphere. The one that I appreciate anyway. And then we've got the, uh, the spool of LED lights back here. And look at this remote, by the way. Look at all the functions on this thing. So we'll turn these on. Oh, it's that one. Look at that. I got on a crazy uh, color change thing. It does all kinds of stuff, man. It's got all these different colors and all these different uh, crazy color fades. And what's this one? Fade 7. Ooh, that's nice. That's smooth. What else we got? We got a flash. Auto. I don't know what that does. It looks cool, though. Slow. Oh, so it'll slowly change colors. Of course, you can hold just one like white and you can you can turn it down. And all that, so that's pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, the fairy lights back here. I love these ones. Man, I love fairy lights. And what else? Oh, the ones back here. Let me show you that. So these ones, I gotta mount the switch. I gotta hard mount the switch, but... Uh-oh. Oh, because oh, those ones are on the other side. So here's these lights. Let me turn this off so you can see the color temperature. See the color temperature on that? It's pretty, uh... It's pretty cold, actually. But it's not super bright, which I like. So those are, these will be really good at night. I like them. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Check out the links in the description for the lights. And uh, use your best address if you want to um, get mail forwarding service or have your vehicle registered out of state. One other thing I forgot to mention was that my insurance went down by about $300 a year. So I saved a ton of money by switching to Geico. Just kidding, not Geico. Uh, switching to South Dakota instead of Oregon registration. Thanks for watching, guys. Love yourself! Mm -hmm.